Okay. You've got Mel. And we should be live on Facebook any second now. And we have a very special guest today, uh, Alon Cohen. Uh, usually I don't uh, dress, especially for our guests, but today you're a special guest. So I've worn a, a shirt that I knew you would like. And I see you've put a very nice background there, but actually you're somewhere in Teaneck, New Jersey, right? Right. Okay. And uh, why are you, uh, ah, I forgot. We need, we need to start with the jingle. What is you've got now without the jingle? Are you ready for the jingle? Sure, go ahead. Okay, so we need the jingle. Here's the jingle. You've got Mel. Get a chair, grab a seat. Oh, we'll sweep you off your feet. We move, we groove. You got Mel. Ease your legs, rest a while. All you gotta do is smile. We're swell, can't you tell? You got Mel. Oh, when the show begins, you better hold on her tight. Or before you know it, you'll be high as a kite. Take a break, settle down. We're the only show in town. That's our own, don't you know? You got Mel. Give it up, don't think twice, we're a hurricane on ice. What the hell? Give it yell, ring your bell, show and tell. Mademoiselle, give a smell, you got Mel. You got, got Mel. Mel. And Mel has Alon Cohen. Alon. Yes, so um, when you walk down the street in New Jersey or New York, do people stop you on the sidewalk and say thank you? No. Yeah. <laughs> huh? No. Well, but, it, but the whole world should be thanking you, shouldn't they? Well, the only two people that uh, said that. Um, Sp speak up, speak up so everybody can hear you. I think there's only two people that said that. One of them was, was Jeff Pulver, right? Uh, he always claims I saved his life. And, uh, and another woman that claims I saved her life, but nothing to do with voice over IP. Okay, so you are uh, in the in the internet world, you are royalty. Why is that? Royalty, I don't know something that exists anymore. Uh, but uh, but uh, people uh, associate me with the invention of voice over IP. They associate you with the invention of voice over IP because you're one of the inventors. Correct. So um, there's a huge irony here. The, the fact that we are able to speak, I'm in Ramat Gan in Israel, and you are somewhere in New Jersey. The yes. fact that we are able to speak to one another goes back to this invention of yours 25 or 30 years ago. What did you invent? Can you explain it to the non-technological people? Well, non-technological people, well, it's... Uh... The, basically, the, the old uh, style telephony uh, was uh, designed to transfer data in a very synchronous way. Every bit that came in came out. And that process was like synchronized globally, which was creating a very expensive overhead on every phone call. And that, uh, that meant that phone calls were, uh, were just expensive if you wanted to talk to from Israel to a different country it would cost you, you know, dollars per minute, uh, not cents per minute like it costs today. So the idea was that uh, to try and transfer the voice over the internet, which was a very cheap medium where there is no synchronization between the two ends. So you send packets on one end, they go out the other side, and you need to create some sort of a magic on, on the receiving side to make sure it sounds good. Uh, overcome all the problems that happen uh, because of the fact that it's not synchronized like, you know, like a tape recorder. So imagine it's like playing a tape recorder on one end where the other wheel might be spinning in a different speed or might be stopping, starting, and so on. You still want to make sure that where it actually plays, it goes smooth. And that's basically the idea. So, so for people who aren't technological, I say something that creates a packet, and then that packet goes 
to somewhere else to the other side you yeah. hear it as a packet well the packets are basically small segments of what you're saying and every segment is very small it's like 20 milliseconds of your voice it's not okay. it's not but, 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 but figuratively that would be the idea and then you took those packets and you assemble them back to one stream of of uh, audio that you want to hear and it's a bit different than uh, let's say video streaming because you want to do it in a, in, a, uh, in a way that there is no delay between the two sides. Um, on a video streaming, you, you can do buffering, you collect the data basically, and then you start playing it. So you have time to manipulate it. We, on a phone call, you cannot have that latency because otherwise people start talking over each other and so on. So y Yossi Vardy, our dear friend, um, did he invest in you in the end or not? Not uh, personally, uh, but uh, when we, when Leo and I had, uh, Leo was my partner, Leo Aramati, uh, uh, started vocal tech. At some point, uh, we were looking for investments, and uh, he was uh, he was consulting for uh, an Israeli VC at the time. And they sent him to do the due diligence. So he came in, he saw what we had to offer, and he didn't like it. He didn't like it. <laughs> but he went back and he said, you know, this product they're working on is probably not going to be successful. But uh, I see good people, so you should invest. And uh, they took his advice and they did some uh, and they invested there. Yeah. And, 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 uh, and that was the technology that you used or you pivoted? No. So at the time we were... Uh, Focusing more on uh, on sound sound card and sound devices for uh, for um, computers. We had a sound card that was like a, a card that you plug into the the motherboard, and and, and the one we were working when uh, Vardy came was something that plugs into the back of the computer, so you don't have to open the computer. But, but, but Yossi was right in in the sense that uh, the technology was not ripe, but you guys were. Yes. Correct. And, and, and then you went on and, um, and made millions, but you could have made perhaps billions. Are you now, are you a happy person or are you a bitter person? No, I'm uh, pretty much happy. Uh, you know, it's uh, at each point in time, you always try to make the best uh, decision you can make. And uh, if that's what you do, there's no looking back you if you know if i had if i was as uh if i had the knowledge i had today back then i would have done things differently maybe but but i did the best i could at the time and so um, nothing to be not happy about but you know so so um so uh, before i go on i will ask you the question that musicians all over the world want to ask you when will it be possible for us to play and sing together over uh, Zoom or uh, StreamYard or one of these uh, streaming uh, vehicles because it takes almost a second for what I'm saying to reach you. When are we going to be able to sing together? Uh, I never tried to solve that problem. I know some platforms did, but uh, maybe when we can do time travel. It's not, it's not soluble. It's, it's um, impossible for us to stream like at the speed of light. No, it's, uh, you know, there are networks that are getting to be better and better. For instance, uh, if you look at uh, Starlink, right, that uh, Elon Musk is deploying, uh, the idea is that you could send data from one point on the earth to the other point in less than 70 milliseconds, you know, back and forth. So, and that's because you're talking about uh, satellites that are very close to Earth uh, and they send uh, the information through space with lasers or whatever, which means uh, light travel faster than on Earth or on uh, fiber optic cables. So you get the benefit of, uh, of having really direct, almost direct connection between any two points. So, 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 um, so the, the, uh, the people in the audience don't understand what I'm referring to. So, uh, do you know this song, Havana Gila? 
Yeah. So start singing Havana Gila and I will join you and then people will understand why it's impossible. Go ahead. Well, asking me to sing is a, is a stretch. It's okay. Well, I'm going to sing together with you. So you didn't hear me singing together with you. I did, but I, I heard the latency, obviously. Yeah. So this latency, uh, Alon, you have to get rid of that while I'm still alive. <laughs> well, we can try. Okay. Um, so let's move on. So, you know, some people are one hit wonders. Uh, you invented something that changed the world. By the way, Yossi Vardi says that you and your partner made the biggest disruption in the history of manufacturing in the world. You put all the telephone companies out of business. Oh. I, I don't know if that was the reason. Uh, you know, they were definitely a monopoly at the time, right? And uh, but, you know, the U.S. government had, had to do with this as well, breaking up those companies to smaller companies. Uh, sometimes uh, you wonder, you know, if that's uh, always the best uh, for the consumers, right? When you have, uh, when you had Bell Labs, for instance, right? It was a huge company. It was the Google of those days. And they were able, they had so much money because they were a monopoly, because they, they were charging so much for telecom uh, that uh, they could work on any interesting invention they wanted. And so many of the modern stuff that we use, like microwave and, uh, and transistors, right? It's all came from, uh, from Bell Labs. Yeah. Uh, so uh, if you don't have that, that massive budget somewhere, you know, it's, it's hard to come up with big things. But, but, but the truth is that you and, and, and Jeff, with your technology and his understanding of your technology uh, and petition to the U.S. government, you uh, made it difficult for all of the telecom companies in the world to survive. And for the rest of the world, you made it free for everybody to use uh, Skype and Zoom and whatever we use now. Well, it, you know, I wouldn't uh, say I was uh, Jeff. You know, Jeff was responsible for the legal part of that. Yeah, but I mean, from, but, the, from uh, the technological point of view, you guys really changed the world. Yeah, the fact I that I'm talking to you now on Zoom is because of technology that you were the 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 uh, Moses of. Correct, but the 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 problem with the telecom companies was not that they were that, that we disrupted them so much, it is the fact that they were so rigid. And what they did, they couldn't believe that something like that could work or scale. And because of that, they were either dismissing it, which made it hard for a startup to, you know, maybe quickly succeed. Uh, but they were also sometimes trying to go against it because they did not want to cannibalize their own business. In the same way, the same way that Kodak went against the digital camera that they invented. Yeah. They didn't want to cannibalize their market, and somebody else did. So, uh, so that's uh, sometimes when you have people that have uh, low, uh, not enough vision managing those companies. You, you get to those situations, and we had people that came to Vocal Tech from AT and T because they saw the future, and they said, "You know, I don't want to work in this company that doesn't even see. This is the future. I'm going to go to Vocal Tech." And they were giving up good jobs for a job in a startup company just because they, they liked the innovation, they liked the, the vision and, and uh, you know, the potential of what it can do. And you guys were right in the end. Uh, but I want to move on um, to a musical analogy. You know, there's bands, rock bands, that had one hit and that was it. You know, the Procol Harum from the 60s had one big hit. Um, and some inventors have one big success and uh, people say they got lucky, but you're actually a serial inventor. And here I don't mean Kellogg's Corn Flakes. Uh, you've had several uh, companies that you founded that uh, well, became successful. I, I wouldn't say that they become, uh, became as successful or that, you know, changed anything in that scale. Uh, but... Uh... 
but yeah, you know, if if you can, uh, uh, I always try to to, you know, to innovate. Right? It's not always successful. Sometimes you try and you just waste money and time. Um, and also, you know, filing for patents is not cheap. So um, so that process is not really conducive to innovation that much. Uh, sometimes you just prefer for people not to know what you've done and just do it, uh, you know, behind the scenes uh, rather than go and make a patent and, and, and make it interesting. But there were also things that uh, did not come to light. For instance, uh, when we were at Vocal Tech, we had something we called, uh, I think it was called iWave, uh, which was basically streaming media um, and uh, and essentially was the invention of the DVR, right? Uh, video on demand. And uh, that invention was actually approved, uh, got a patent, everything. But nobody at Vocal Tech even realized the value of that. Everybody was it was it was shadowed by voice over IP, and you know today just the patent just expired. But it was maybe the first patent on on DVR. Well. I didn't know I didn't know that you invented DVR also. Yeah, um, you look at but, the patent. You but Alon, uh, you also you also invented the idea of experts uh, teaching things online. Uh, I wouldn't say I invented it again. It's uh, but it was inspired by uh, by by Vocal Tech because uh, the minute we it was in nineteen ninety five we started with the audio in nineteen ninety six we added video. It was really lousy video frame and uh, uh, you know maybe less than 10, 10, uh, 10 frames per second, very low resolution or video, but it was video. And uh, the minute we started doing something with it, people started to come up with all kind of uh, uh, interesting use cases for that. And I thought, you know, maybe that could be the next uh, the next revolution in, in, in making money. And I kept that idea in my, uh, you know, uh, drawer um, until one day uh, Netscape, uh, was bought by eBay, I think, and I thought, wow, this is really the combination of e-commerce and, and video, exactly what I had in mind. So, um, so maybe I should try and do something with this patent. And it was the right time because I was between different uh, between startups, and um, I was looking for uh, to raise money for this uh, for this idea, and, and the idea was to create a marketplace where people could sell their expertise uh, online. And uh, and that and, company uh, now generates uh, income it successfully. Does, the company still works today. I'm not. I'm a small shareholder there. Um, when I started, I uh, um, I got a founder. I found a, an investor and. Uh, uh, Together we uh, worked the company for a, for a few years. Then uh, uh, we sold it, and uh, I left. But uh, the we actually got the company back, which uh, I guess smart uh, lawyer on our end made that happen. Uh, we got the company back, and uh, but at this point uh, I let uh, this uh, partner and the investor they took over the company. So I was just. Uh, shareholder a small shareholder and and now you're involved in phone.com correct phone.com is uh, it's it's a voice over ip obviously but it's um uh, it was founded by ari raban which was uh which would work at vocal tech at the time uh back when give him my regards please oh thank you and uh and ari uh, uh met the guy who bought the domain name phone.com and uh, this guy who's a famous uh, domainer which means you know you buy and sell domains like you buy and sell real estate uh, so he discovered uh, phone.com and software.com uh, that weren't in use how, how much did phone.com cost i don't know but in the millions uh, so he now he had this domain name, but he needed somebody to do something with it, and uh, so he can sell it with more value, basically. So he uh, 
approached Ari, which he knew, I guess, uh, through uh, Ari at the time was working with Jeff Pulver and all that. So he, so Ari uh, took this uh, project and uh, started the company. And uh, I was the first employee that he called. Uh, so we've been on this for maybe 11, 12 years now. And, and the difference between that and Vocal Tech was Vocal Tech was focusing more on, uh, you know, the, the hardware and the devices that were needed for voice over IP because the concept, which was, uh, I'm not sure if it was correct or not, was not to compete with your own partners, which are the service providers. Um, but... Uh, in, in retrospect, it could have gone another way. Yeah, maybe the service was more lucrative than uh, than that. Also, we gave up the the internet phone, which was the the Skype of those days, right? To do hardware for for bigger for phone companies, you could so would, that, phone you companies know. didn't know what to do with it anyway. <laughs> you know that, that you, you know we thought this was a game, and the other one is big industry, right? So let's go with the big industries, but. But obviously, selling to the to this industry was uh, proved to be very very tough. So, so Alon, um, you're one of the smartest people I've ever met, um, and uh, but you have a, a close relationship with somebody who I think is at least as smart as you, and that's your daddy. And uh, Chagai was uh, on the program, um, and um, I uh, you owe me because I've been keeping him out of trouble for a dozen years. So um, how does your uh, how do you, how do your folks uh, fit into this equation, and why did you end up leaving Israel? Um, so my parents uh, they were always very supportive. You know, um, never told me once. You know, why are you wasting your time uh, on on a startup? You know, where look up at your look at your friends. I'm you know working in. Telrad or other companies and, you know, making money and uh, and you live with your parents, right, in, in, in the garage, <laughs> right? <laughs> basically. So... Um, and, and, and work in the garage. Yeah, exactly. Uh, and live there, right? <laughs> so, so uh, but, uh, but they were very, uh, that was very helpful, time, you know, for me at the time, because again, I didn't have any any salary or anything and uh well my wife was working but uh social workers in israel do not make that much money uh i don't know if it covers the diapers when when you have a baby right uh so uh so that uh, definitely you know the fact that i didn't have to pay rent or anything uh definitely helped me uh through those uh, those years and that you ended up uh, moving to the states so uh, yeah, what uh, you know, it was years later, maybe towards uh, ninety nine, two thousand. Um, I uh, uh, I finished my MBA, uh, which uh, was maybe the only time in my life that I enjoyed school, uh, <laughs> because because uh, you know engineering is hard, and specifically if you're doing a startup at the same time. Uh, and uh, and the MBA was uh, learning about things that I already had some experience with, you know, going through vocal tech, building a company, going public, all that. And uh, so it was much more alive to me when I was actually studying it. And it wasn't things that maybe you don't know or can acquire the knowledge in some other ways, but, but it gives you some sort of... Uh, confirmation for the things that you know and and more confidence in, in the things that you think you knew. Uh, so I really enjoy those uh, things. But uh, at Vocal Tech, we had an interesting phenomena where we had an office, the development, we had the development office in Israel, and we had the, the marketing and sales in the U.S. Uh, um, in Fort Lee, which is uh, New Jersey. And um, it was interesting because the Israelis obviously know everything, right? So when somebody from the marketing says, you know, I need this and this, the Israeli first response is, 
what is this idiot is talking about? Show me one customer that needs that that feature and and so on, and becomes a and it creates a lot of friction. And the interesting thing is that you take an Israeli from the Israeli office, you send him to the U.S. right, so they can maybe create a bridge, and after two weeks he becomes the idiot that is asking for things, right? And you know, and the Israelis become those that do not want to develop what they need to develop. Um, so, so that friction. So after I finished my MBA and decided, you know, I'm going to start a new startup, I thought, you know what, this is. A, it was in the conferencing, uh, audio conferencing space. I thought to myself, uh, I want to solve that problem by putting everybody under the same roof. Israel wasn't the market for conference calls at the time. The U.S. was. So I decided, you know, I'll, I'll build it in the U.S. I'll have the R&D. I'll have the marketing, sales, everything in one place under the same roof. So, so if they want to tell somebody he's an idiot, it's going to be in his face. So uh, and that, you know, obviously harder to do. <laughs> so um, so that uh, so I started this. The, the, the problem was that in, you know, 2000 and... Uh, I think uh, the the economy, the dot com uh, problem started, and all that, and uh, and that was uh, obviously uh, very hard to to raise second round. But eventually, we sold that company also to an Israeli company called uh, Vicon, and um, and they I, I don't know what they did with the technology, but. Um, but they, but they did embrace the technology, and some of the people that worked with me at the time, including me, we moved to to work with Vicon for a while. So you ended up becoming an American. Yeah, after a few years, you know, uh, um, you uh, the first thing you know when you have this green card and all that and visa, whatever. Uh, the first thing you want to you want to always be legal, so you don't want to come here without a working visa. The second thing is. You want to get a green card, which is kind of an extended visa, let's call it. But also with, with those things, you're at the mercy of the, you know, changing rules, you know, for immigration. For this no, no, Alon, Alon, uh, are you more American today or more Israeli? No, I, you know, I never bought into the American sports and, and whatnot. Uh, unfortunately, I'm... Uh, as I got older, I guess, you know, I got more into the, as a spectator, but more of a deep spectator, more into the, the local politics, right? Mm -hmm. uh, just because of, uh, I guess, when you have kids, they grow up, you're, you have your concerns about their future, right? So you want to think about, you know, who you vote for just to make sure they have the right future. Uh, so, um, so, so that's I, so. From that perspective, I'm more American because when I was in Israel, I never actually got into those uh, things. I, I couldn't care less. Uh, so you're you're more you're more politically active now in the states than you were in Israel. Yeah, but active meaning like you know trying to convince friends to friends to vote for something, not uh, not going in the streets and uh, burning stuff. So, so Alon, uh, you've done so many things, uh, young people including my students, look up to you for really good advice. Um, in like three or four minutes, can you encapsulate your best advice for young people who have ideas, uh, who want to change the world? What is your best best game plan for them? Uh, first of all, you know, even though I've done it, you know, maybe a few times, it still doesn't make you an expert. You, you know, you, I've never done it a hundred times, right? So whatever I say, and also it was stretched over a long period of time, so reality changed. So, you know, with the reality of- Alon, the, stop being so modest. You changed the world, Halas. Give, no, give your best advice. No, but, so I, I'll get there, but I'm, I'm saying, you know, take this advice with a grain of salt, obviously. Okay, all right. Uh, so uh, I think two things. First, if you have some idea, always keep collecting ideas. Maybe you'll need them one day. Uh, second thing is don't be afraid to start something. Uh, and start by starting, it doesn't mean you have to quit your job. You have to start investigating, invest time in it. 
you know, research the, the, the area, research the market, research the idea, try to talk to people, figure out if, they, if it's interesting one way or another. Um, and, um, and basically uh, uh, keep investing time in it until you really feel that it's the, the right thing. And maybe at that point you can convince some investor to do it. But uh, if you can do it without investors, and that's a big difference between back then and now. Uh, now it's really uh, it's much simpler to work things out without investors. And uh, so if you have uh, a talent and you collect some friends, and we we'll talk to you in a second about partners, maybe uh, you can actually put something uh, working without really any investment. It's all in the cloud. It's cheap. It's mostly software today. Uh, and uh, and so so mo so most cases uh, in high likelihood you can do it without investment and that's the best idea the best advice. So, so all, all the way to your MVP, to your minimum viable yeah. product, try and do it with your you own bootstrap money. Yeah, that's great. Advice. Advice. If it's a, if it's an app or whatever, you can get it to the point where it's in the app okay. store. Okay, I I agree with you. Keep going. Um, yeah. Now the second thing is really partners. Uh, and it depends on the personality. I really like to work with people uh, together, create synergy, uh, innovate together and whatnot. Uh, you know, in, in today's work environment, it's not happening. Everybody got its own job, its own uh, story to develop, whatever, you know, it's, its own tasks. You don't really get to work together uh, except maybe you meet every morning to hear each other's problems, but but or but you don't you don't really work together and I like that togetherness and so finding a right partner is, is really important for me and it has to be somebody that's essentially in your same st state that you are if you're not married it's better that he would not be if you have kids it's better that he would have kids uh, and married and whatnot so because uh, if you're not in the same situation it's hard to get into the same understanding of um, motives and uh, and reasons to, to do things and time to invest and, and so on. But if you're kind of in the same state, you, know, you might find it's more uh, easy to communicate with the partner and, and you know, and, and make sure you watch uh, each other's back. Uh, and, uh, and so finding a right partner is really critical. And, um, and it, it's not easy to do. Um, I've had partners that weren't that good and I just had to shut down the company because, you know, the guy had a different set of goals than I had and uh, couldn't put the time and invest and, and mostly time that, that was needed to, to do this. Uh, and um, so, uh, so, this is, uh, uh, so this is important to, to find the right partner. Um, so that's it. We said no investors. <laughs> we said, you know, work on the idea. It's, it's cheap to start, but you have to be willing to give up your free time because it takes time and, uh, it takes an effort. And, uh, if you're not willing to, you know, to give up your spare time and, you know, sit at home and try things, uh, and, and rather go to the beach, then, uh, you end up with, uh, no startup. Uh, so, it, it, so it has to be like the hobby of all hobbies. Exactly. And you have to enjoy it. You know, it has to be something that you like, that you believe in. Along the, 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 you would use. So this is my last last question. You know, we teach young people, uh, but we know that less than 1% of startups succeed in the marketplace. So is it okay that we're still excited about startups and we still teach young people that it's worthwhile? Yeah. Are we making well, even even if you are not successful in that immediate startup that you're working? Let's say you're a software developer, and they develop, uh, and you're let's say an iOS developer, and you start just started, and your company is developing in Objective C some application. Take take yourself a few years back, then one day uh, Swift come along. And uh, you talk to your boss and you said, oh, you know, this new thing came out. 
and maybe you're a curious person and say, maybe we should try that. Well, the response that you'll get would be, uh, let's wait for the next version. You know, maybe uh, you know, let micro, let Apple get rid of some bugs or whatever, and then we'll try that in the app. It's too much risk to change anything now. It's a waste of time. You know, we almost have all the code done in Objective C. So, uh, but if you had your own pet project, you would say, wow, you know what? Maybe I'll try and 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 redo it. Whatever I had in 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 Swift, and you try that. And then, uh, you know what happens the next year, even if you did not succeed with your pet project, the next year when your company moves to Swift, you're the expert, right? And you get ahead of other people and so on. So that process, even the process of thinking about your own pet project, solving problems, naturally you have to deal with more than just your own small things because you have to deal with the front end and back end and UI and, and so on. You learn much more than just doing your own job. So it, it prepares you for, for You're not challenges. successful, you already succeeded. Yeah. So it prepares you for challenges. Yes. That are around the corner that you notice and maybe other people don't. Exactly. Which is what you did as a young man. Always, yeah. You know, when we started, we didn't think about too much about manufacturing or anything like that, but we just solved one problem at a time. And, uh, you know, and, and, uh, Finding the solution for voice over IP was a decision that was uh, different than making your research and figuring out why it's not going to work. But actually, but at, at, what stage, at what stage did you guys realize that this was like, you know, it was crazy? Like, you know, two young Israeli kids going to solve this worldwide problem. What, what, uh, what, what made you think that you could do it when other people weren't succeeding? The, the truth is we didn't have a choice uh, at that time we it was after we got some money so we got some few few friends to join the company and whatnot and we wake up and we we're doing sound cards and we wake up one morning and, and there's a new company in the market called creative labs and they do a sound card that sounds lousy but has one thing in, that that does that's, that's good which is play the the pac-man music uh, from notes, uh, MIDI, MIDI type files, uh, which meant they can have a lot of uh, music on a floppy disk, right, which was 256K, uh, that could play for hours where, you know, sampled music, you need larger files and so on, and it's hard to... So, so you, you, had, you had no choice but to pivot. So uh, exactly, <laughs> everybody wanted it for gaming, right? It was, uh, that was the solution for gaming. And everybody wanted sound to be Sound Blaster compatible and whatnot. And we weren't Sound Blaster compatible. We didn't have that MIDI file capability. Um, and we didn't have Chinese manufacturing also, right? We were doing it in Israel. So uh, so that really pulled the rug out of, uh, out, uh, the, uh, you know, beneath our feet. And we had to come up with a, with a solution. And that's where we said, you know, we understand voice. We understand oh sound, uh, computerized voice. We understand software. Uh, we understand te telecom because we we came from you know the telecom space in the, in the uh, in the army and it was kind of our um, you know hobby uh, growing up as kids. So uh, maybe we could um, do something uh, in that space. And that's where we started uh, again picking up things that we've done in the past and we said you know we've tried moving audio over the network you know let's let's try that uh, let's make a a local office phone from that because we believe that everybody would have voice eventually on the computer so let's uh, so we said let's let's be the application for the voice and and that's what we started doing uh and so eventually we were aiming for this local office not the internet until we started seeing that this is what actually people are trying to use it for because they were trying to save money on it on international long distance so they were trying to use it between london and paris and whatnot and we thought oh wow this is where we should be right this is where where we have most of the value so so let's try and aim for that and we had to change a few things we had to make sure it, it's downloadable so you don't have to have specific uh, hardware with it so every sound card would work 
it had to work in real time, obviously. And, you know, at the time we had the car that did some audio compression with the chip. That wasn't good enough because you had to have a specific hardware. We said it needs to be downloadable. And so we had to, to come up with, you know, algorithms that run in real time and so on. Was it, had, it, had, it, had, it, had, it had to connect people. Yeah. And it did. So, uh, Alon, what a story. Um, have you written your book yet? <laughs> Not yet. Uh, people are actually are asking me here and there to do this, you know, but maybe it's too early. I don't know. We'll see. Well, we can always publish it on our books in which you are a, uh, an investor. Yeah, yeah. I started writing it, but uh, a while back, now that I look at, the, at, at my our book account, our book's account, uh, but maybe, uh, maybe, it's maybe a lot it, of work. It's a lot yeah. of work. Yeah. Okay, but I mean, if, if, if you look at it as fun, and I really think that you should tell this story because, you know, it's a story that changed the world. And I know that you're a modest guy and maybe a little bit shy, but the world deserves to know your story and to hear it just the way you've presented it. And, yeah, and, all, lot, and uh, all the lessons that you learned along the way. Yeah, there's a lot of stories around that, you know, uh, for Leo and myself and other people that were in the company. You yeah. know, at some point we were like uh, 300 people and there's a lot of startup that came out from uh, from, vocal, from people who worked yeah. in vocal tech. And this was part of the start of the of the startup nation that everybody knows. Exactly. Exactly. Was you were the startup nation the before there was a startup nation. Exactly. So, uh, Alon Cohen, it's a uh, it's not only a pleasure to interview you here on You've Got Mel, but it's also a pleasure to know you and your family, to be your friend. Um, I think very highly of you, and uh, we're honored. Uh, and uh, the world thanks you for uh, for what you've done. Well, thank you very much, Mel. Always a pleasure talking to you. And uh, take care of yourselves over there in Teaneck, New Jersey. It's if actually you... Tenafly, New Jersey, but yeah. Well, Tenafly, uh, with all the, uh, I, I, I don't know Teaneck from Tenafly, uh, from Patterson, from, uh, from- No, Patterson is a bit far, but Teaneck is really neighbor, neighbor town. Mm -hmm. All right. Um, just take care of yourself because um, there's only a couple of countries in the world where the virus is worse than Israel and you live in one of them. Um, so take care of yourselves and uh, we send you uh, much love from the Holy Land. This is Alon Cohen, ladies and gentlemen, who invented voice over IP. And as always, you've got mail. Thank you. Bye-bye.